Welcome to Riceville United Methodist. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And welcome to the weekly online video worship service for the Riceville United Methodist Church in Riceville Beach, North Carolina. And we're so glad that you're joining us today for this online video worship service. A little later, you'll see a QR code on the screen. You can take a picture of that with your cell phone, your smartphone, and it will give you a link through which you can register your attendance today and let us know that you're watching this service. We know that people are watching from one end of the country to the other. We've recently had reports of viewers in New York and California, as well as across North Carolina. So we'd love to hear from you and know that you're watching and you can also let us know about your prayer concerns and prayer requests when you register your attendance. I have a few announcements to uh, mention today. Uh, first of all, this Sunday afternoon, uh, September 26, we're going to be having a special service late in the afternoon uh, that's called the Bring It to God service or a service of lament. Uh, it's going to be this afternoon at 6.30 at uh, the South Channel Park, which is very close here by the church. It will be outside. Um, you know, we've, we've struggled through this pandemic for the last 18 months. And in this special service, we have the opportunity to bring our burdens and our concerns to God. Uh, the service will include Holy Communion, and uh, also, uh, it would be a great idea if you're planning to attend, if you bring your own chair, bring a lawn chair or a camp chair uh, in order to, to be seated. And then, uh, next Sunday, October the 3rd, is World Communion Sunday. And for the first time in 18 months, we will be receiving communion in the Sunday morning worship services. So we're very excited about that. And for those who are watching online and want to participate, that will be next weekend. Just make sure that before you watch the video that you have some bread and appropriate liquid available for uh, communion. And then uh, one final announcement, uh, Sunday afternoon at 5.30, uh, there's an activity called Extend the Walk. And it will be a group of uh, folks who will be uh, meeting together, walking the loop here at Wrightsville Beach. And while you walk, you'll have the opportunity to engage in some discipleship growth through having conversation about uh, what the sermon uh, is about uh, for the service today. And if you walk fast enough, you'll be back just in time for the Bring It to God service. Once again, welcome to our online video worship today. We're so glad that you joined us. Let's now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Join with me now as we go before God in prayer. Here we are, Lord. Shine the light of your love on us. Kindle your spirit within us. Work your redeeming will in us. That the world may be won through the power of your love. Help us to sense 
your unseen hand in the unfolding of our lives and to respond to the gentle guidance of your spirit as we worship you today. That we may know the joy you give to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we continue in our worship as we have the opportunity to affirm our faith. And we affirm our faith today using the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. I'm Mel Pitt, and I'm going to be reading from the New International Version, Psalm 119, 1-11. Blessed are they whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who keep His statutes and seek Him with all their heart. They do nothing wrong, they walk in his ways. You have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed. Oh, that my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees. Then I would not be put to shame when I consider all your commands. I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous laws. I will obey your decrees. Do not utterly forsake me. How can a young man keep his ways pure? By living according to your word. I will seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God to thee, nearer to thee, e'en though it be a cross that raiseth me, still all my song shall be nearer my God to thee, nearer my God to thee, nearer Like the one. 
wanderer The sun gone down Darkness be over me My rest a stone Yet in my dreams I'd be Nearer my God to thee Nearer my God to thee Nearer to thee There let the way appear Steps on to heaven All that thou sendest me In mercy given Angels to beckon me Nearer my God to thee Nearer my God to thee Nearer to thee Nearer Will you join me in prayer? Loving God, you are the author of life. We are here today because you formed us in our mother's wombs and breathed your breath of life into our lungs. We thank you for this world you've created, for this community you have called us to, and for all the ways we see your love at work around us. Lord, we know that when you created the world, you said that it was good, and yet, we know that sin and death have invaded your good creation. Like the prophet Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones, we find ourselves looking around at this broken world and hearing the question, can these bones live? And like Ezekiel, we respond, oh Lord God, you know. So God, we pray for the dry bones around us. We ask for your loving, life-giving power to show up in our lives, in our community, and in our world. We pray especially for those people and situations we name now before you, either out loud or in our hearts. Lord, we thank you that you hear our prayers. We thank you that even when it feels like death is winning, you are breathing new life into dry bones. So now, with the confidence that we are your beloved children, we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, Jesus taught us that just like earthly parents provide for their children, our Father in heaven will provide for us always. When we give, we get to practice trusting in God's care. Because we know that God will take care of us, we don't have to hold on to our resources so tightly, but instead we can be generous. So I invite you now to respond to God's generosity by giving back a portion of what God has given to you. There are several ways that you can give at this time. The first is by writing a check and mailing it to P.O. Box 748, Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina, 28480. You can also give on our website, wrightsvilleumc.org, or using our smartphone app. As we prepare to worship God through our giving, Please join me in prayer. Loving God, thank you that you give the gift of abundant eternal life. You have said that you are a good father who gives us good gifts. Your generosity overflows to us. Everything we have is a gift from you. As we bring our offerings to you, we give back to you from the abundant blessings you have given us. May our gifts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Wrightsville kids, I'm Pastor Julia. This week, I was really enjoying some of the nice, cooler weather, and I took a nice walk all around the church. And as I was walking, I saw some really cool trees and plants that I've never seen before. I want to show you some of what I found. The first thing I found is this. This is a little branch from what is called a white cedar tree. It really kind of smells like Christmas, and it has, I don't know if you can tell, but it has these little bitty berries on it that are sort of whitish blue, and I think that's really, really neat. Now, the next one I found, I have never, ever seen something like this before. Look how cool that is. It's bright purple colors. This is called a beauty berry. And all of these little purple things are little, little bitty tiny berries, not the kinds you eat. And um, isn't, isn't that so cool? It grows on a big plant. And then the last one that I found is just about the coolest thing. Uh-oh, might have gotten lost here in my big bag. <laughs> this is called a hearts of burstin and this is what it looks like this little red thing when it's on the tree and then it has these little bitty orange seeds inside so these are some of the cool things that I found on my walk now I'm wondering do you think that these are alive or are they dead what do you think you know, if they were on a tree, we'd say that they were alive because, you know, they have these cool, you know, green things that usually mean life. They're really neat, and that's how we know oftentimes something's alive. But they're not on the tree anymore, and so it's maybe harder to tell. Now, I'm not going to do this because it would make a big mess, but if we opened up these little berries, we would find little teeny tiny seeds inside. Now, are those alive or are those dead? Well, they won't look like these cool plants because they won't have colors or green or anything like leaves or roots. They'll be kind of hard and, and dry. So what do you think? I think they're probably dead. What do you think would happen if we made a little funeral for them and we put them in the ground to say goodbye? Yeah, that's right. In the springtime, instead of there just being a seed in the ground, there'd be a whole new plant. How it works with plants is that seeds, even though they look like they're dead, actually then become something that's full of life. In the Bible, the Apostle Paul tells us that that is kind of how our bodies work that all of us one day will die and our bodies will be in the ground, but that then Jesus is going to raise us up. And just like seeds that go into the ground and then become a beautiful plant that's alive, we too will get to be alive again. So this fall, as you're seeing things fall down from trees, different seeds and nuts, you can remember that God has promised that we will be resurrected, which means we will get to be alive even after the time when we die. Let's pray. God, thank you that you are the author of life and that you are making us rise up like new, cool, colorful plants. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. I'm Doug Lane, senior pastor here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. Our scripture for today may seem a little out of season, um, so may the sermon, but I, I do think it's in, appropriate for the moment. And so I invite you to hear again the story of Easter from the Gospel of John, beginning in chapter 20, verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. 
So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrapping, uh, excuse me, linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they didn't understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they've laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God. For us, the people of God, thanks be to God. Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for every story that you share with us, for all the ways that you reveal yourself to us, but most especially for the gift and amazing miracle of the resurrection. Lord, may we keep our eyes looking toward your blessed future. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We need that. I know it is an Easter, I get it, but every Sunday in the Christian church is supposed to be a little Easter. And there are days when we need to simply be reminded of that truth. Martin Luther once went through a very difficult time in his life. People didn't want to hear God's word and worries just simply tormented him. His wife took notice of the fact that he just seemed to always be crestfallen. So one day, he came home and found his wife all dressed in black. He was surprised. What's going on? Katie said, Jesus died. That's crazy, Martin said. What are you talking about? Jesus didn't die again. Katie said, no, it's true. Jesus must be dead, or Martin Luther wouldn't mope around here so sad. Yikes. Was she right? Do the worries and tears of life Take our eyes off of Jesus? Well, here's the truth. Of course, Jesus is not dead. He lives. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. But when I hear that story, I can't help but think of Mary Magdalene from the Bible. There she is on Easter morning. For her, Jesus really was dead. She'd watched him die on the cross. Now, we don't know much about Mary other than the fact that Jesus had driven seven demons from her. But can you imagine that? Jesus gave her this hope that she'd always been missing. Through Jesus, she had overcome her demons and was looking forward to a new, more fruitful, more happy life. But now he was dead. The one who had changed her life so dramatically was now gone. Easter morning for us is usually a joyful time. Not for Mary. I don't know if she wore black that day, but I'm sure her eyes were bloodshot, tear stained. There was no joy in her. Just lots of tears and running. She got up early and ran to the tomb, but Jesus was gone. So she ran to tell Peter and John. They ran to the tomb. No Jesus. Peter and John left, but the Bible says Mary stood outside the tomb crying crying on Easter morning. Why are, are we crying? 
Why are you crying? What has made you upset? What has disappointed you? What has brought you pain? Who, me, you say? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm not crying. I'm doing great. Yeah, I don't know about that. Sunny days don't take away the pain. When was the last time you cried? I mean, really cried. I bet it wasn't that long ago. Here are reasons I've seen people cry just in the last two weeks. Cancer news shocks a family. A positive COVID case has turned life upside down for a family with children. There's conflict with people that you thought you could trust. A marriage is crumbling. There's the memory of a loved one who is now long gone. A company is cutting back and someone has lost their job. Why are you crying? I bet underneath all these masks that we've been wearing, there's a reason, or two, or three. With tears in her eyes, Mary looked into Jesus' tomb. Peter and John had just looked in too. It was empty, but wait, wait a minute. She saw on the second occasion two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been. Angels. Now you'd think that might be a pick-me-up. Mary was too sad to even notice. The angels asked her the question of the day, woman, why are you crying? Mary must have been thinking, what do you mean why am I crying? Isn't it obvious? They've taken away my Lord and they, I don't know where they've put him. Without Jesus, nothing could stop the tears. Not even angels. I need to find him. I need Jesus. Where is Jesus? So she turns her back on the angels and who did she see? Jesus. But she didn't recognize him which might seem weird. After all, this is the one person she's been looking for. Did Jesus not have his uniform on? Is he wearing new clothes? Is she seeing him clean shaven for the first time? Or is this what our problems do to us? They cloud our eyes and our thoughts so we can't see what's right in front of us, staring us right in the face. Jesus asked that same question, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Mary, thinking he was the gardener, said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I'll get him. Mary asked Jesus where Jesus is. She wants Jesus. She needs Jesus now. He's standing right there. But she's so distraught in the moment, she can't see straight. She couldn't see Jesus through all her tears. Makes me think of some of my darkest days. The days when nothing goes right. You know those days? You ever have those days? Sometimes the days they stretch into weeks. Sometimes even longer. Maybe you're in one of those dark times right now. To have every day be a day of tears. It's never really over. I remember when I was a child, my mom, she used to wash my hair with Johnson's baby shampoo. Anybody remember their tagline? No more tears, right? It's meant to be so gentle that it doesn't irritate your child's eyes if it gets in them. But I was thinking this week how cool it would be if there was a shampoo that you could magically wash in your hair and it would just take all your tears away. No more tears. Just hop in the shower, wash them away. Unfortunately, that shampoo hasn't been invented yet. As Jesus saw the tears in Mary Magdalene's eyes, what do you think he was thinking? I wonder if he's thinking, I know, I, I totally get it, seriously. The prophet Isaiah once described Jesus like this, as a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Tears, Jesus knows. Believe me, it's okay to cry. There's no shame in it, even Jesus did it. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And as he hung on the cross, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Tears were part of Jesus' job description. When Lazarus, one of his best friends, died, the Bible tells us Jesus wept. He is a man of sorrow. 
Jesus knows tears. But on Easter morning, Jesus didn't have tears in his eyes. Why? Well, sin is one of the things that causes tears. And yet after Jesus hung on the cross, what did he say? He said, it's finished. Sins are forgiven. Pain also causes tears. Jesus knew pain. He was beaten by those Roman soldiers and then hung on a cross to die. But he redeemed that pain by his resurrection. Death, death causes tears. What the angels proclaim on Easter morning, Christ is risen. Death is defeated. As the Apostle Paul said, where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus won forgiveness for us. He took on our sin and our pain and he even defeated death once and for all. Like Pastor Julia told us last week, I've read the book and God wins. So Jesus looked at Mary and just said one word to her, just call her by name, Mary. And when she turned and looked at him again, can you picture the smile on Jesus' face? And the smile on Mary's face. Indescribable joy. Everything she thought she had lost is now back. It's all going to be okay. What was the greatest relief of your life? Was it passing your driver's license test? Was it hearing her say yes when you got down on one knee? Was it hearing the doctor say he'll be fine after hours in the hospital? For Mary, it's realizing that Jesus is alive. Seven years ago, William McRaven, the commander of the U.S. Special Operations Command, gave the commencement speech at the University of Texas. In his speech, he told a story about his time in Navy SEAL training. Now, the goal of the instructors was to break these men's will so that only the strongest survived. In the middle of what they call Hell Week, the recruits went into the mud. Not up to their ankles, not up to their knees, not even up to their waists. I'm talking about up to their necks in mud. I, I'd have died of claustrophobia. But they didn't. They sat in that mud for 15 hours. Not 15 minutes, 15 hours. They're cold, they're exhausted, they're groaning. The instructors offered them a deal. Look. If just five of you quit, you can all get out. The groans increased. You could sense some were ready to give up. But then suddenly, somebody in the back started singing. It was terrible. It, it, it wasn't singing on key. It was just an awful, awful sound. But it was singing. And then another voice joined in with the one in the back. And then another and soon every single man was singing. The instructors, they yelled and cursed at the men, but they just kept on singing. They threatened if they didn't quit singing that they'd never get out of that mud. And they just kept singing. And as now the admiral later described it, he said somehow the mud seemed a little warmer, the wind a little tamer, the dawn not so far away when we started singing. You know what that's called? Hope. Hope. This is what our world needs. Hope. You know how hope starts? With a single word outside of a tomb, Mary. And then Mary's voice joins in, I've seen the Lord. And then the voices of the other women, he's risen, he's risen indeed. Even if nobody believed them, e even if they sounded terrible, even if it sounded impossible, he's risen. Finally, the disciples catch on. That's right, he's risen. And, and then their disciples and their disciples, and no one can stop this song for centuries. Hey, he's risen. All the persecution in the world can't stop it. The Romans can't stop it. The Pharisees can't stop it. Nobody can stop it. For 2,000 years, the song just continues. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. There's hope in that. There's hope in Jesus Christ. So, why do we still cry? 
Well, the song's not done yet. When she heard her Savior's voice, Mary hugged Jesus and didn't want to let him go. She didn't ever want to lose him again. But Jesus did something surprising. He said, do not hold on to me, for I've not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I'm returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Jesus' work of salvation is finished. But the finished product isn't here on earth. There's one more stop to go yet. Sin's been forgiven. Pain has been redeemed. Death has been defeated. But the tears, they're not going to stop until we get home to our father's house. Tell my brothers that I'm going home. I bet Mary cried again. I bet she cried when her family members or friends died. And then again, as each of Jesus' disciples were executed for their faith in the risen Lord. I bet she cried when the Christians were kicked out of Jerusalem. I bet she cried when many of her loved ones didn't believe her own incredible story with Jesus. I bet Mary cried over and over and over again. But every tear reminded her of where she was going. To heaven. A place with no more tears. In this world you'll have trouble, Jesus promised, but take heart. I've overcome the world. I have overcome the world, he says. Fortunately, our lives don't end with our earthly death. They go into eternity with the one who has overcome the world. In the middle of this world of tears, Jesus showed a man named John just what heaven is like. So that he could all tell all of us in a book that we call Revelation. He says this, he says, now the dwelling of God is with people and he will live with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He'll wipe away every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. You know how the story ends with no more tears. So when the tears come, remember, it's okay because we're not there yet. You got one more stop yet to go. Until then, who in your life needs hope? The worries and tears of life can take our eyes off of Jesus. But hope, real hope, starts with just one single voice. The calling out of a name. Be that voice that remembers that he is risen? Like Katie Luther, who in your life needs Jesus? Just look around and ask, why are you crying? In the midst of the tears, there is forgiveness, there is joy, there is hope in Jesus Christ. He will wipe away every tear from your eyes. Imagine that, no more tears, for he is risen. And he wants to lift you up from the darkest days that you're experiencing. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Holy and loving Lord, in the midst of pain, confusion, chaos, and disappointment, you bring order to our lives. You bring healing, comfort. Gracious God, you bring us new days. For you have shown that even in death, there is resurrection. There is possibility. There is a new hope. Father, be with us. Help to lift us up so that we can see through the tears to the reality of Jesus Christ, knowing that we can follow him into eternity, into your glory. We ask this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Behold a broken world, we pray, where want and war increase. And grant us, Lord, in this our day, the ancient dream of peace. 
A dream of swords to sickles bent, of spears to scythe and spade. The weapons of our warfare spent, a world of peace remade. Bring, Lord, your better world to birth, your kingdom loves domain. Where peace with God and peace on earth and peace eternal reign and peace eternal reign. Don't forget um, the announcement that Pastor David had earlier on today. I want to remind you that uh, we are having that service of lament at 630 at South Channel Park uh, entitled Bring It to God. Bring your pain. Bring your disgust, your disappointment, all your tears. It's okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be disappointed. It's okay to feel sorrow. It's also okay to reach out to someone who may be experiencing the same and realize that they need Jesus just like you do. And maybe share those words of hope that he's risen. There is a tomorrow because he lives. He has conquered death. He's brought us resurrection. He's given us eternal glory. He's given us a new day, a new tomorrow. There's more. There's more than this because Jesus lives. Go forth in peace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.